In 2016, popular inverse volatility product SVXY returned 80%. The next year, in 2017, SVXY returned over 180%. And in 2018, SVXY is currently down about 90% year to date. So how exactly does this insanely lucrative yet very risky volatility product work? Well, in this video, we're going to look at the mechanics of volatility products in general, but more specifically, how SVXY itself works. Now after this video, if you're interested in learning more about trading these volatility products and you want to see researched trading plans for option strategies on these volatility products, be sure to check out the options trading course that is linked in the description below. So to understand how SVXY works, the first thing we're going to do is look at the investment objective that is stated on the ProShares website. So right here we can see that it says the ProShares Short VIX Short Term Futures ETF seeks daily investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to one half the inverse of the daily performance of the S&P 500 VIX short term futures index. So that's a lot of jargon there. So let's break this down one sentence at a time. So the first piece to this puzzle is to understand that SVXY tracks one half the inverse of the daily percentage change of the S&P 500 VIX short term futures index. So based on certain movements in that index, let's calculate the daily SVXY performance. For example, if the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index increases by 10% in one day, SVXY will decrease by 5%. If that VIX short-term futures index decreases by 5% in one day, SVXY will increase by 2.5 percentage points. The next piece to this puzzle is understanding what the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index is actually representing. Well, down below we can see that it says that the VIX short-term futures index is a portfolio of monthly VIX futures contracts with a weighted average of one month to expiration. Now let's go ahead and look at an example to really illustrate what this S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index is actually doing. So as we mentioned before, it is a portfolio of monthly VIX futures contracts with a weighted average of one month to expiration. So let's say the nearest term VIX futures contract has 15 days to settlement and the following month's VIX futures contract has 45 days to settlement. In that scenario, the front month VIX futures contract or the nearest term VIX futures contract would get about a 50% weighting and that means that the next month's VIX futures contract would also have a 50% weighting in the index. So if we multiply the weightings by the time until settlement and we add them together, we get a average weighted time to maturity of 30 days to settlement. Now let's say the 15 day VIX futures contract is trading at 16 and the 45 day VIX futures contract is trading at 17 and a half. Based on those prices, we can calculate the price of the 30 day VIX future at 1675 and we do that by taking each contract's weighting multiplying it by its current price, and then adding those two values together. Now once we've done all that, we've successfully calculated what some people call the 30-day synthetic VIX futures contract. Now it's called synthetic because it doesn't actually exist because we've actually calculated that VIX futures contract price from the first and second month VIX futures that actually exist. So all we're doing here is trying to calculate a VIX futures contract with a weighted average time to maturity of 30 days or one month. So this index is exactly what SVXY is tracking the inverse of on a daily basis. Now, more specifically, one half the inverse. So for example, if this 30 day synthetic VIX future fell by 12% in one day, SVXY would increase by 6% on that trading day. On the other hand, if the 30 day synthetic VIX futures contract increases by 50% in one day, SVXY would fall by 25%. Now when does SVXY perform the best and when does it perform the worst? Well let's go through some performance guidelines just to show you what environments are ideal for SVXY. First of all, since SVXY rises when the near term VIX futures fall, SVXY performs the best during low volatility market environments that have very few market drawdowns. So in this chart I've highlighted the 2017 year in which the S&P 500 increased almost the entire time with very, very minor and infrequent market drawdowns. So during that period, SVXY returned 181%, and in 
And that's because this was a very, very low volatility market environment, and there were very few market declines, which means there were very few days in which the VIX futures had increases. Now, on the other hand, since SVXY falls when the near-term VIX futures rise, SVXY performs very poorly during volatile market environments, especially when that market environment includes very sharp and severe drawdowns that happen in a very short period of time. So in February of 2018, we saw a very, very sizable market decline in only a couple days, and that led to a 90% drawdown in SVXY. Now, since SVXY's returns are tied to the daily percentage changes of the near-term VIX futures, the biggest risk to SVXY is a massive volatility spike that starts from low VIX futures prices because that will result in the largest percentage gains relative to the same increase in the VIX futures prices from a higher price. So if we look at February of 2018, on February 1st, the near-term VIX futures prices were below 15, and on February 5th, the first month VIX futures price was almost at 35, and the second month VIX future was just below 30. So we saw a crazy increase in the near-term VIX futures prices that started from a very low original point, and that led to a huge percentage gain on those near-term VIX futures, which led to a disastrous loss in SVXY. If you want to check out some more of our options trading videos, be sure to watch the videos featured on this page right now. Once again, I'm Chris from ProjectOption.com, and I hope you enjoyed this video on SVXY.